DIY is great and all, but does it make sense to make your own laundry detergent? And if so, does making your own laundry detergent work better than the stuff that you can buy just at the supermarket? The answer to that question is where I come in. I'm Zach, a fourth generation dry cleaner and huge laundry nerd that's very curious about DIY detergent. So let's get right into these recipes. Off the bat, these DIY laundry detergent recipes are pretty straightforward and easy to follow, but you do need to purchase some stuff that you might not normally have in your home. So my dad, Jerry, the brains behind this video and the man literally behind the camera, found two recipes online, both from the website The Spruce, which has millions of followers across quite a few platforms. So the information really should be good and true. The first recipe is for a powder detergent. The second recipe is for a pod detergent. So I'm going to make, test, and break down each of these recipes and see how it compared to typical off-the-shelf products. Then we're gonna talk about what improvements can be made to each of these recipes because, spoiler alert, to put it nicely, these recipes are adequate at best. So let's get cracking on both of these recipes. For the powdered DIY laundry detergent recipe, you are going to need borax, super washing soda, baking soda, and a cheese grater for our wonderful laundry detergent soap bars. All right, let's make this recipe. Start by taking your laundry detergent bar and shredding it on the finest side of the cheese grater. The smaller the pieces are, the easier they will be dissolving in your machine. This part is by far the hardest and most time consuming. A good little arm workout though. Once you're done, you'll have a nice big pile of cheese, I mean soap, that we will use as the base for this recipe. Next is one cup of baking soda, then one cup of washing soda, followed by a half a cup of borax, and the last step is mixing it all together with gloves. Some of these powders can cause skin irritation, so better safe than sorry. All in all, pretty easy to make. This is the final product. It has a pretty mealy consistency. Now that we've made it, I'm not fully convinced this is a true DIY recipe because these detergent bars are made by large detergent companies. For example, Fels Naphtha is owned by Purex and Tide is owned by P&G. So let's talk about the other ingredients in the mix. First up is baking soda or sodium bicarbonate. This really helps with reducing malodor in your clothing and softening the water, which allows your detergent to work better. Next is super washing soda, baking soda's cousin, sodium carbonate. Again, this is gonna help soften your water, allow your detergent to work a little bit better, but it can be a little bit irritating on your skin. I'd really recommend wearing gloves when mixing this recipe together. Next is borax or sodium borate. This is gonna raise the pH of your water, which allows for stain removal, and it's gonna help whiten and brighten your clothing. Add everything into a bowl, mix it, and then store it in a sealable container. Your biggest issue here is gonna be avoiding moisture so it doesn't get all cakey, but honestly, this recipe was pretty easy overall. Here is the final product. Cost of this ingredients was around $15 plus $7 for our cheese grater. So all in all, about 22 bucks. Making it was actually pretty easy. It only took us about 15 minutes and most, the vast majority of that time, was spent grating this darn laundry bar. The recommended amount to add into your laundry load is about three tablespoons, which I agree with. Quick side note on dosing of laundry detergent, you really only need about two tablespoons of liquid laundry detergent. Try using less, trust me, I promise I'm not steering you wrong. Anyways, this recipe should get you about 18 loads of laundry, but if you take all of those ingredients that you purchased and then combine them, you can probably double up that recipe and get around 36 loads. This brings the cost per load to around 40 cents, and that's not including your cheese grater or your time. That's pretty average when it comes to laundry cost. For our DIY pod recipe, you are going to need super washing soda, white vinegar, Epsom salt, hydrogen peroxide, a grated laundry detergent bar, and totally optional, but essential oil for fragrance. Before we make this, I really wanna talk about some of the components of this recipe, because some of it just doesn't make any sense. Hydrogen peroxide is a liquid form of oxygenating bleach. It's amazing at brightening, whitening, and color correcting clothing. Unfortunately, this recipe calls for only three tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide, which across this massive recipe is not gonna do anything. Plus, because it's a liquid, it's going to evaporate before you can even use it, which means it's going to lose all of its cleaning properties. So not only are you wasting your time and money by putting it into your recipe, it's not gonna help you down the line. Vinegar is also great for fabric softening, odor removal, and stain removal. But when combining it with washing soda, you're neutralizing both, which stinks. But on the plus side, you got a really cool elementary school volcano reaction. 
All right, now it's time for our pod recipe. I won't bore you again with more laundry detergent bar grating, so start with a half a cup of shredded soap flakes, then one and a half cups of washing soda, followed by two tablespoons of Epsom salt. Next is three tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide, which is an oxygenating bleach. The last required ingredient is a quarter cup of white vinegar. Totally optional, but 20, 30 drops of essential oil for scent. Then mix with gloves on as it's pretty messy and form pods. The original recipe calls for an ice cream scooper, but I think doing it with your hands is way easier. Once done, let them dry out overnight on a baking sheet or any nonstick surface. I used a paper plate the second time I did it, to be honest. And they came out way better than I expected. Pretty firm and solid overall. This is the final result of the pod recipe. Honestly, they're pretty solid, but overall it took us like a half hour to make. The cost for the total ingredients was around $25. And again, that doesn't include things like cheese graters, food processors, or your time, which I think really is valuable and should be considered into the price of this. All in all, this brings it to around 75 cents a load, which is honestly on the high side. Now that our DIY recipes are done, we get to test them and see how well they clean. To find out how well they cleaned, we're gonna follow our stain removal quantification process. What is that? I'm so glad you asked. We're going to measure the results of our swatches before and after cleaning, and then capture those results with our trusty spectrometer and measure the difference. Then we collect the average stain removal across different water temperatures, cold, warm, and hot, because they all clean very differently. I can get into the nitty gritty of this process in another video if you want, but I do follow the same AISE standards that all of the big players use to determine how well their products are cleaning. Here are our cotton test swatches after cleaning. The top row are unwatched swatches, the middle row is powder recipe, and the bottom is the pod recipe. Left column is for cold, middle is warm, right is hot. In general, hot water is best for stain removal and you could see that here. To me, the powder recipe did better on the food stains, which are on the bottom half of each swatch, which is likely why it was a few percentage points higher than the pod in stain removal. So these DIY recipes did okay, but I think we can do better. So let's try and improve these recipes. This is my dad's DIY recipe. We're gonna use two parts super washing soda, one part Molly Suds, which is a powdered detergent, one part borax, and one part sodium percarbonate. Mine is absolutely identical, minus the powder detergent. I'm swapping Molly's for Tide's with Oxy Booster. It's one of the best powder detergent that I've ever tested that's on the market right now, and I'm just going for performance. Since you might not know what sodium percarbonate is, it is an amazing form of powdered oxygen bleach, which is the main active ingredient in OxyClean. It's gonna be really good for removing stains, brightening, and whitening your clothing. I am really, really surprised that all of these DIY recipes excluded it. I mean, sodium percarbonate is my favorite sodium in the cleaning space. I mean, doesn't everybody have a favorite sodium? No, just me. I'm not gonna bore you with measuring this out and mixing it. I think your imagination can do the heavy lifting there, but let's talk about the performance of these recipes. So my recipe, which focused on performance and revolved around the Tide powder, came to be around 35 cents a load and removed around 64% of stains, about 10 percentage points higher than the other recipes. Jerry's recipe, which revolved around Molly Suds, was around 55% of overall stain removal and cost around 32 cents a load. His recipe focused on very simple ingredients over performance. And here are the results of our upgraded DIY recipes in comparison to the DIY powder recipe. The top row is the original powder recipe, the middle is mine, the bottom is Jerry's. My recipe was based off Tide powder and showed impressive stain removal results. You can see the difference most obviously in those yellow mustard stains which are right in the middle of the swatches. Jerry's recipe based off Molly Suds had similar results to the original powder recipe but was much easier to make. And here are some of our thoughts after researching, making, using, testing these original DIY recipes and our own DIY recipes. First and foremost, I think it's a bit confusing and misleading that you're making your own detergent if you're buying a laundry detergent bar that a big cleaning company made. For example, Fels Naphtha is owned by Purex, which is a giant in the laundry space. To me, it's more like you're buying a detergent and adding some really wonderful supplements to help with the cleaning, which is great, but to me, it's not really DIY. If you really want to use these original DIY recipes, I would avoid using them in a top-loading washing machine. 
That's because top loaders have very little mechanical action, fancy way of saying rubbing, which is a huge part of stain removal. That's why almost all professional equipment is front loading. Also, warm to hot water is definitely key. The biggest issue I foresee with using these old school soap bars is that these beef tallows and coconut fats require high temperatures to make sure they're soluble in water. Quite frankly, they are not going to dissolve in cold, so that's not even an option for these recipes. And a lot of people are using these DIY recipes for sustainability purposes, but if you have to use hot water to ensure these soap flakes are melting in your water, that's gonna increase your energy consumption during your wash cycle by 900% versus cold water. So you may have saved some money making your own detergent on the ingredient cost, but you're definitely gonna see an increase in your electrical bill by heating up all that hot water to run your laundry. There's a reason why all the big detergent players are reformulating their products to make sure they work in cold water. Using cold water is the best way to be sustainable when doing your laundry. To be honest, I think the quickest and easiest fix for these DIY recipes is to swap out the super old school laundry bars. Some of these came out in the 1890s, by the way, for a more modern and updated laundry detergent. And if you're trying to do DIY detergent to be a little bit safer when it comes to ingredients, I have a few options for you. One are these laundry sheets. They rip up pretty easy and dissolve really quick. Should be way easier than shredding a bunch of soap bars with a cheese grater. And if that's not really for you, I'd try some of these modern powdered detergent brands like Ingredients Matters, Molly Suds, or Nelly's. They all clean pretty well and their ingredients are quite simple. And for those focused on performance, I'd really recommend a powdered Tide or Ariel or Gain. They really rip apart stains and provide a really good clean. And if price is your concern, I'd use a powdered detergent like Roma or Hispano. Those are usually pretty inexpensive and again, provide pretty decent cleans. All in all, I personally am really stoked that people are trying to reverse engineer products and innovate their own ways to make improvements from an ingredient, price, or performance level. And I truly do not want to disincentivize anyone trying to make their own detergent. I just think that the execution of a couple of these recipes is a bit off and flawed. But I am disappointed with the spruce who put out these recipes that are riddled with flaws and errors, ingredients that neutralize each other. As a laundry nerd, it's pretty aggravating and makes me sad. To me, these DIY recipes are kind of like a car. You may have put really cool tires, wheels, suspension, exhaust on it, but you downgraded the engine. All of these supplemental supplies like washing sodas and oxygen bleaches are meant to help the detergent clean better. But if it's surrounding something that's weak, it can only do so much. For more laundry tips and tricks, feel free to follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Jeeves underscore NY. And feel free to always ask your laundry questions, comment, message me. I'm always here for it. And let me know what you want me to talk about next. I'm really excited to be making more long format content to talk about laundry and textile care. Happy cleaning.